Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today in this video I'm going to be showcasing, well finally I'm going to be showcasing uh, my latest Redstone computer project that I completed just a little over three months ago I'd say. If you were to leave out all of the uh, debugging that I had to do with this and all the programming errors that I had to fix while writing algorithms for this computer. But anyway, I am now ready to present this computer to you since I now have enough time, I don't have schoolwork, and it's also Thanksgiving break, so yeah, I'm able to shoot a video today, so and without a further ado, let's get on with this showcase. So to start off, I'm actually going to show you guys how this computer runs with a program and yeah instead of showing you how all the parts and all the components in this computer uh, work together and uh, make this computer run I'm actually going to just demonstrate a little program that I have put into this computer. This is just a really simple program. It's it's a addition. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the computer right now. Of course, we're going to load the pro it's going to load the program in. I'm just going to wait for it to boot up. All right. And this light just turned on and that means it's waiting for a user input so we're gonna have to go over to this data input bus right here and we can input two numbers and basically what this addition program will do is it will take two numbers that we've inputted through the uh, user interface and it will just add them together and it will display the result on this raw binary output right here. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick little... let's just do 2 plus 2 just for demonstrational purposes. And we're just gonna enter that data into the computer and it's gonna take some time to process All right, so the computer just finished processing that information that I inputted, and as you can see, the answer is of course four because two plus two is four. And you know what? We can also, I think we can also just. I'm gonna input another set of numbers. Let's actually do. Hmm, what do I want to do? Let's do four. Save that to the a register. We're going to do 4 plus 2. That's what we're going to do. And that should equal 6. So we're just going to speed this footage up again. All right, so as you've seen, the data output has changed. So instead of number four, now it's number six, because we took the new uh, a set of numbers that we inputted into the user interface, and it added them together, gave a new result, and it replaced the number four with the number six. So yeah, that's pretty much our simple addition program we can probably do as many numbers as we know we can add as many numbers as we want but I think we don't really need to do any more so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the computer and as you see it's going to shut off just like that 
So now that my demonstration is over, I think it's time for me to show all of you guys how this computer actually works and how all the components in this computer actually work together and make this computer function as it does. So I believe you probably don't see money a lot of this because it's not really color coded at all, but uh, this computer consists of several main components. Well, I think the two main components would be the ALU, which is this little sliver right here. And we have the RAM, which is this big block. We have a couple, we have at least, I think we have four decoders in total. We have this one decoder right here, that is the ALU function select. We have two decoders right here which is for the RAM function select. And I believe up here we have another decoder which is for the program counter and of course this big bundle of wires right here is the program counter. It's not really compact, it's actually my design. And I believe I've actually used this design a couple of times in my uh, my redstone testing world. I think I used it uh, once in my uh, redstone hard drive, my prototype hard drive that I've been working on. I actually may need to do a video on that now that I mentioned it. But anyway, um, I think the other couple, I think, yeah, the few other main components would be this uh, program memory right here, which has a very complex instruction set, which is something that is not really necessary since this computer isn't really that sophisticated at all. And I think the last few components are not technically necessary, but they are just uh, simple I.O. ports for any external, uh, external devices you want to connect to this computer and you can of course use them to interact or to have more interactions with the computer itself. Okay so now that I've gone over all the components briefly I think I'm going to now go a little more in detail on how all these parts function and how they work together to make one big uh, computing machine. So to start off I think we're going to go and look at the ALU this is just a uh, just a normal 12 function ALU, not my design. This is actually Nubasource's ALU design, which is based around Amorth's adder circuit design. And the reason why I use these ALUs in pretty much all of my computers is pretty much because they're just really compact and they're really practical as well. You can do a lot with these ALUs. So the next thing we're going to look at is this big block right here, which is actually the RAM. So yeah, of course, this is again not my design. This was actually taken. Uh, this is actually uh, Swift X16's RAM design that I took, and you decide to use it in my computer just because. It's for the same reason as why I use decide to use uh, Nubasaurus's ALU design is because it's very compact. And just in this single uh, small little space right here, I can store about uh, just shy of seven bytes of RAM, which is, if you want to be specific, is 6.75 bytes or 54 bits of RAM in total. So yeah, it's just a, just a very standard single read uh, RAM, very basic. And I believe that's pretty much all I really need for a computer like this is just simple single read RAM, but if I ever try or if I ever decide to make anything more complicated then I might actually decide to use uh, Swift X16's a dual read RAM instead, just so I can get more capabilities out of that. 
So this third module that I'm going to show you right here is, as I've said before, is the program counter. And actually, unlike the ALU and the RAM that I've shown you, this is actually my own design. And of course, it's not really the most compact thing in the world. I've actually have designed much better program counters after I finished this computer. Of course, these three um, modules right here are just the data input slash output ports. Of course, as I've probably, if I uh, don't remember telling you, this is the data output port. That's just an all purpose one. If you want, you could probably use this to connect to different external uh, modules. Maybe if you want to connect, maybe like a seven segment display or maybe just another raw binary output or just anything else you want and of course the data input port is for inputting uh, data but you can also yeah it's just for uh, plugging in external devices like if you were to plug in maybe like a keyboard or maybe a random number generator or something into the data input port that's probably what you should do And of course down here is just the um, data output port for like uh, GPUs or something. If you were to connect maybe either a really simple GPU that just draws pixels on a screen. So the next thing we're going to look at is the user interface. So of course in the user interface there's not really much here. It's relatively very simple of course you have your power buttons which is for turning the computer on and turning the computer off basically turning the computer on will just um, turn on clock which I think the clock is clock is actually color-coded unlike most of the other stuff on this computer and it's a little bit hard to find though oh right here yeah this um, computer clock is coded in netherite blocks as you can see and this is I believe this is a 44 tick clock so it's 44 ticks per cycle and basically when you turn the computer on it will just turn on the clock and of course the clock will um, clock all the registers in the computer and it will also clock the program counter and it will cause the program memory to scan through the program and act accordingly. And of course turning the computer off will just turn off the clock and reset all of the RAM and all the registers and you know just put everything back to its default state. These two blue buttons right here are for the uh, data registers. The two working dat data registers which are uh, the A register and the B register and you can find the reg the A and B registers right here these of course are just simple repeating uh, repeater locking registers and of course uh, going back here these orange inputs are just the data input and I think pretty much all of the data related inputs and outputs are coded in orange. So yeah, um, yeah, the data output is coded in orange and the data inputs are covered in orange. And of course this is just a simple binary input. Of course it's, well, I mean for technical reasons this is actually flipped the other way instead of 1, 2, and 4, it's actually 1, 2, and 4. but it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, all you really have to do to fix it is just to swap all the bits around just so it's in the correct order. And of course, this last button right here is just the enter data button, which will just enter all of the data that you've accumulated in the A and B registers straight into the computer. And that's, of course, what is going to cause the computer to interact with that data in a certain way. 
looking at some of these outputs right here, we have the program counter output, which just outputs the uh, current line of code you're on on the program memory, as you can see. And also, this uh, little indicator light is just the waiting for user input, just in case if the computer needs you to input a number, that light will just shine on and that will let you know. These two yellow um, indicators are the flags. So we have two flags in this computer. We have the zero and the overflow. The overflow is currently turned off because the computer is not experiencing an overflow currently. But of course the zero flag is turned on because the output from the ALU is currently zero. And as I've gone over before, this orange output is the data output. Just a really simple binary output. One, two, and four. Three bits, since this is a, a three-bit computer. And this last red indicator light is just a clock pulse button, just to tell you if a clock if the clock has gone around another cycle. So it's basically just the clock indicator just to let you know if the clock is turned on or off. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little showcase video that I have um, made for you to showcase my latest Redstone computer project. If you did, please make sure to give this video a like and also consider subscribing to my channel to see any more videos like this. Also, if you want to try this uh, Redstone computer out yourself and if you want to try and program it and test it yourself. There will be a, a world download in the description so that you can download this computer yourself. Also, I hope I have explained everything clearly. I probably have not. But anyway, if you are a little bit confused about anything, just make sure to ask me any questions in the comment section and I will be sure to answer all of your questions to the best of my ability. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will probably be going now, so goodbye.